Jackson Scott, look at that. Huge. Whoa, whoa, Jackson Stone, get it right, Jackson pal. Stone, sorry, Jackson Stone. All his fans that are right in the front row came out. Jackson Stone's got his own little cherry section here tonight. What, what were you doing on intermission, man? I couldn't find you. Is that why you're getting names wrong, bro? No, I was hanging out with the restroom. I got a bottle I'm, of water. I'm telling Mikey. Yeah, I got, you're telling Mikey I got water? That, yeah, that's what you're claiming. That, well, that's exactly what happened. I've never seen water in a flask before. That's lit. But if, they, if only for a moment here, I can show you. I'm holding the bottle of water. I think our camera's out, actually. Jackson Stone here in the ring. Lights, camera. Action, Jackson Stone. 6'1", 224, quite the physical specimen. This is the, you know, these are the kinds of matches that I feel like Black Label Pro has become known for. I think uh, to after tonight, hard-hitting solo uh, matches may be the, the, the kind of action of the hour. But this is a six-man scramble we've got here. Big Mark Wheeler. Mark Wheeler from north of the border, our Canadian friend. Uh, tell me a little bit about Mark Wheeler here, Greg. Oh, hi, Mark. Well, Mark is obviously from Canada, and he's only been wrestling for a couple years, and he's trying to uh, make a name for himself. What it comes down to is Mark has aligned himself in Alpha One Wrestling with a guy by the name of Alexander Del Bruno. And Del Bruno has been teaching him everything he knows, and everything Del Bruno knows is very, very dastardly. Let me tell you that right now. So we, uh, we can expect uh, maybe a lot of uh, dirty deeds here by Mark Wheeler. Some dirty deeds and, and, and some rugged good looks, man. He's got a chiseled jaw. Rugged good looks? What are you? Come on. Why don't you start this guy's Tiger Beat fan club? And here we go, Pat Monix. Now, Pat Monix. This guy right here. You know, there's something a little bit different yeah, about him. Say, he's you know? different. It's not the same Pat Monix. He's changed up his look. He's got longer trunks on, but there's just been... I don't know, it twitches here and there. He just seems a little, a little off, you know, a little distant here compared to the Pat Monix of the past. I, I, I don't know if he's going for a little a little more of an aggressive look. I don't know if he's trying to be a little less fun loving. I mean, the guy he's talking about, he's high fiving little girls yeah, here in the front row. I, mean, I don't know, but I don't know. He used to have the short trunks, he used to have the phone number on his, on his tights. Like, yeah. it's, uh, I don't know, man. I, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something uh, there's something changing inside of uh, Pat Monix. Yeah. It's bleeding onto I, the I, surface. I, I've noticed it as well, Greg. This isn't just you that's been seeing this. I've also noticed a change in, in Pat Monix here. I wish there was a change in commentary with you. I gotta be. Greg, why, come on, buddy. Keep keep trying to throw me under the bus here. Eventually, I'm gonna turn into the bus driver. Drive it over you. Ooh, look at that. Peep, peep. Chapstick right on the lips, looking good, looking fresh to death. He's a pretty boy. Absolutely, that PB smooth here coming to the ring, and uh, you know that's a, that's the kind of stuff that I like to see. You know, talking about Marcus and Eric Ryan here from one of the earlier matches, and how you thought that they were maybe so kimped. I mean, if anything, I feel PB smooth is the epitome of kimped. You know, he's the kind of guy that walks into a club and the ladies line on up. You know? Kind of like me. I mean, uh, me and PB Smooth should, uh, I should get back in the ring and we should form a tag team. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Man, this guy doesn't give any Fs. If, it, if this was an R-rated show, I would have said that actual <laughs> word, but I didn't. Wheeler almost ate it there after getting pushed off the ring apron by PB Smooth. Well, pretty Boy's not going to be intimidated by anybody. Uh, it's also, I mean, it's not hard to see. I mean, when, we, when you see PB Smooth next, biggest man in this match. Sage Phillips. Uh, Sage Phillips kind of reminds me. It looks a little like Rivers Cuomo. It looks like he's a Weezer fan with those dark rim glasses there. He, you looks, know? he looks very astute on the way to the ring. That's uh, true. Very mild mannered and laid back. But you know, don't look the look. Don't let the looks deceive you. When he gets in the ring, sort of a technical wizard. Is this is this kind of maybe one of those uh, Clark Kent type deals? You take off the dark rim glasses, and all well, of a sudden you take on these new. Powers, new, new I mean, skills. Look, uh, we're not talking about me right now. We're talking about Sage Phillips. I haven't really, young, I, to be fair, I haven't really been talking about you at all tonight, Greg. And that's that's a travesty of justice. Well, I mean, you, you do enough talking about yourself, I feel like, for the both of us. So. <laughs> and Trey Lamar.
Trey Lamar rounding out our six pack here for this scramble match. Young man trying to find his identity, I feel, in a lot of ways. He's only been wrestling for about a year, trained by the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano, who, by the way, I train. Absolutely. And Trey, Trey's, uh, he's searching for an identity. Uh, I, I, I think uh, it's going to take him a little time, but the kid's got potential. I mean, I, I could, I could, uh, I could see him losing the necklace from circa 2006 around his neck. Is that but, uh, is that is that like a, your opinion as a wrestler? It's very dangerous to wrestle in jewelry like that. You know, one wrong move. Jewelry. Somebody, that's something you'd get at like Spencer's, man. Well, it's still it's still you know you're putting this around your neck. I feel like one wrong one wrong move. Somebody try and look at this right. Let's get it going here. Jackson Stone lights camera. Jackson. Let's get to it. PB Smooth, the first one to get that big boot up, but everybody kind of chiming in here. I mean, just, the, and that's smart, that's smart strategy. Right? Very smart. I mean, this guy's not quite seven foot, but, you know, just about seven foot tall. Yeah, oh, yeah, very, very large man there, PB Smooth, towering over everybody else here in the ring. And uh, Sage Phillips here, he just got taken out as well. What's Monix doing? He looked like he was stalking for a second. Now he's kind of, like, uh, trying to keep it level-headed and cool and... Him, and, and this is usually how these type bouts go, right? Everybody throws himself at each other right out of the beginning. We got two men left standing here, Trey Lamar, Pat Monix. They are the two kings of the mountain at the moment. You got four others on the outside catching their breath, reordering, reorienting themselves. But right now, Monix and Lamar, they're, they're, the, they're center stage. They're in the spotlight. And uh, let's see if one of them can do anything decisive here. You know, I would think that in a scramble match, Greg, the quicker, obviously, you can try to put this away and, and take away the opportunities that the other four men in the match have at taking that victory away for you. I mean, I, I, I would think that'd have to be the strategy of either one of these men. What it comes down to is psychology. Sometimes you got to go in there and you got to form some alliances, uh, and then you got to break some alliances. I mean, it's, it's not about uh, who's the strongest man or the toughest man or the quickest man. It's about who the smartest man is. Absolutely. And that's, what it, that's what matters in these scramble matches. Absolutely. If you've been watching Survivor this season, you know Chris was eliminated last week after being one of the alpha dogs, and, you know, are, are you everybody circled the wagons and was able to out him off the island here. So so, Who still watches Survivor? Are you watching the real world too? It's season 35, Ghost Island, baby. But this isn't a Ghost Island right now. We got two big dogs in the yard: Pat Monix, Trey Lamar, and they've been putting on a they've been on a clinic right now. But look at that, Jackson Stone, maybe a little jealous there. See, I if, I feel like Jackson Stone wasn't hurt. He was just kind of lying and waiting for his opportunity. That's what you got to do in these scrambles. You got to pick your spots. Well, uh, Trey Lamar, I don't know if he wanted to pick this spot or not. He's been unable to get out of the ring and catch his breath, just like almost all the other competitors have. And uh, Jackson Stone here, up and over with a side suplex onto Trey Lamar, kind of picked him up into a bit of a cradle there as well, which uh, puts a little bit more uh, impact on the back of the head when you drop him down. And uh, now Jackson Stone uh, getting tied up there. And look, Sage Phillips, just like you said, a technical wizard there. No, another young man trained by Billy Rock, one of the last students. I mean, Billy Rock was a very underrated performer, and he's passed his knowledge on to a guy like Sage. Well, let's see what Sage can do here. Wheelbarrow up into a bulldog from Sage onto Jackson Stone. I got a little Mike Quackenbush feel here from Sage Ooh, Phillips. Ooh, and all of four foot two Sage oh, is in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, that is not where you want to be. That is, I and mean, he knows it. He, he reached up and he felt over behind him, and he, he knew that that was PB Smooth that had come up behind him. Sage Phillips. Ooh, he ain't backing down. He Sage, yeah, down. you know, but that's what you got to do. I mean, you're in this match to win it, and you can't be scared of any of the opponents, even if it's a guy like PB Smooth. <laughs> I've never I've never seen a, a lockup result in somebody being thrust so hard to the mat in my entire life as PB Smooth just taking Sage Phillips right out of his boots and throwing him to the mat. Sage Phillips yeah, now yeah. was that, able to get underneath. That's not going to work. PB Smooth's big arms and was going for the German there. That was smart, though. Take out that knee. Well, that's what you got to do. But look at this. Even on his knees, PB Smooth is standing eye to eye. <laughs> Still with the same Sage eye. Phillips right Jesus. now. Oh, it's, and PB Smooth grabbing him right by the top, the top of the hair. And Sage Phillips being thrown to the mat at yeah. using Kurgan's claw type maneuver there, I feel like. You, you got to admire how daring Sage was, but it didn't really pan out for him. Mark, on the other hand, he's going to try his luck with the big man. Yeah, Mark Wheeler, he's got a little bit more size here. He's also, again, been out on the outside there catching his breath, methodically waiting for that right moment to reinsert himself into the match. Dodged that big crescent kick there from PB Smooth, turned it into a code breaker, and for the first time, PB Smooth in a little while here is off his feet. Mark Wheeler is the one who's gaining momentum. Looked like he was going to try to go for maybe a suicide dive. And uh, 
Good Jackson workout. Stone there was able to club him over the side of the head. Now it's Sage Phillips shooting off the ropes to the outside. Suicide dive. No pay. Wow, suicide dive from Sage Phillips to the outside. And it's Pat Monix's turn now. He's smashing that mat, getting everybody going. He went up and over to the outside. Oh, oh and wow, I thought he was going to maybe go for a plancha, but tricked us all into a little uh, modified 619 there. Right under the rope. But here comes Trey Lamar. Whoa. Flipping Senton to the floor. Whoa, wow, right out into the audience. He flipped right up and over, landing in somebody's front seat. <laughs> Lap right there in the seats in the front row. You know, I said that this kid's trying to find himself, but I know what he found right there, a little bit of termination to each and every one of his opponents. And and Jackson Stone able to duck a clothesline there from Trey Lamar, but Trey Lamar was going high. Jackson Stone caught him in the fireman's carry. Oh. Dropped him into a TKO cutter. Yeah, very innovative there. Super innovative, exceptionally innovative here. Jackson Stone. But here Maybe is the PB second Smooth. biggest man in the match here, and now he's going to try to be going head to head with PB Smooth. PB Smooth Just knocked the taste out of his mouth. No kidding. I hope you got teeth left, Jackson Stone. Jackson, Jackson Stone trying to fire back, and every time he punches PB Smooth in the face, I feel like he's making PB Smooth angrier. And now it's Mark Wheeler and Jackson Stone having a double team PB Smooth. Smart. I mean, you got to make those alliances here. PB Smooth broke their double clothesline and now a double shoulder block. Just obliterated both of them. Like Moses Whoa. parting the Red Sea and PB Smooth there sliding to the outside. Not something Taking you see from a guy that's seven foot. What is Trey Lamar thinking? Going over the top rope, PB Smooth dunking him like a basketball. Abdomen first right over the top rope. Now PB Smooth popping into the ring. He's got a springboard double back elbow. Taking out Wheeler. Take it out still. And <laughs> look at that up and over. Leg drop on onto Trey Lamar. And PB Smooth is on an absolute tear right now. I keep waiting for somebody to stop this guy from going as running rough shot as, as much as he is here. And, and finally, Jackson Stone and Mark Wheeler able to catch him in a compromising position with his leg over the top rope. Pat Monix with a rough rider from the back. onto Jackson Stone. And now Pat Monix. Kick to the stomach of Mark Wheeler. He's got him in that side headlock. Going for a DDT. Mark Wheeler is able to reverse it. Snaps him in the ears. Backcracker. Oh, man, that backcracker right there. And what is, and here we go. Sage Phillips, he's making his presence known again. This little dog still got some fight left in him. Tried for that springboard flatliner, but no dice. Going for the unprettier. Drops him dead where he stands. Sage Phillips now. Standing tall. I mean, I guess he's the tallest guy in the match when everybody else is laying flat on their back. Looked to be going for some kind of a stunner type maneuver. But Jackson Stone kicked him in the face. Sage Phillips now up over Stone's shoulders and that fireman's carry. And he tosses him like a sack of potato shades of Scott Hall right over his head. All the way slam does the job every time. But here comes Trey. With a springboard DDT right there alongside the ropes. And Jackson Stone is down. Trey Lamar is the man of the hour. Too sweet to be sour. But he gets overpowered by Pat Monix. Who tried to slide into the ring with a DDT of his own. Missed with the kick. Trey Lamar went for the knee to the face. Got into a schoolboy instead. And it's Monix and Lamar back in the ring again. Just moments ago, these two were in Whoa. control. Pat Monix tried to jump up and over. Wound up eating it what? a bit of himself. Trey Lamar making Pat Monix have to sit and wait, analyze the situation, maybe analyze too long as he wound up with a couple boots to the chest. Well, Trey had to regain his stepping there, and that might have brutal, threw up the timing. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Mark. Oh, look at that, Pat Monix. You know, it's almost like he had that ring awareness. It's like he could see overhead. He saw he was looking down on himself and knew exactly where to put his foot. Unusually heightened senses of awareness there for Pat Monix in this match. Mark Wheeler tried to take the opportunity, tried to be a little bit more cunning and steal the victory, but Monix was just one step ahead, knew that ring awareness and got the foot on the rope. Absolutely, and again, like I say, hypersensitive. You know, his sense is operating on another level here, knowing where these guys are going to be without having any Spring look. Board punch. And it looks like Pat Mon or no, it looks like Mark Wheeler there may have injured his knee a little bit, and Pat Monix decisively in control threw him up into the air for a big DDT. That's it. And that's it. Wow. Pat Monix, huge victory here, probably the biggest of his career so far in Black Label Pro. 
taking five men and laying waste to them here. What a performance right after intermission, grabbing that audience, bringing them right back into it with nothing more than pure athleticism, pure charisma. Everybody's on their, on their feet right now. And Pat Monix, Pat Monix, I mean, it, it looks like he's celebrating. I don't, you know, when I'm celebrating, Greg, I'm not usually in that much pain, but look at him. That is a moment of victory for Pat Monix there. Well, maybe this uh, awkward change in attitude is uh, doing Monix a little bit of favors here. You can get this big win. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's definitely been a personality shift here with Pat Monix. I don't know what it is with this experiment going on with him and this this new uh, this new look. You know, this new uh, mind frame here. But it certainly worked. And I mean, again, these six-man scramble matches at Black Label Pro. These are one of the things that really put Black Label Pro on the map. I mean, of course, again, we've seen some amazing competition already tonight. We've seen a lot of great singles action. We've seen a lot of great tag team action. But to see a 